But tonight, first, a look at all the top developments from the Israel-Hamas war that has entered day 17. Gaza's health ministry has said over 400 Palestinians have been killed in over the past 24 hours in Israel's ongoing bombing campaign, making it the deadliest period since airstrikes began on 7th October. So far, at least 5,087 Palestinians have been killed. Israel's military said on Monday that its ground forces mounted limited raids into Gaza. Tel Aviv says airstrikes also targeted Palestinian militants assembling to repulse any wider Israeli invasion. The indications are Israeli defense forces are getting ready for the next stage of an escalating war. Israeli forces have confirmed that 222 people have been taken hostages by Hamas in the October 7th cross-border terror attack. Israel has released fresh footage from the Hamas attacks, revealing the true horror of that attack. After a first convoy of 20 trucks, a second convoy of 14 trucks entered Gaza with humanitarian aid. The trucks entered through Rafah, crossing from the Egyptian side to the Gaza Strip. The UN says the people of Gaza need a commitment for much more aid. Among the aid is uh, trucks that have been given by the Indian government that is providing also relief material. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke to Jordan's King Abdullah amid the Israel-Hamas conflict. The two leaders have shared concerns regarding terrorism, violence and the loss of civilian lives. Now with the border opening up from the Egyptian side to Gaza, the focus also has shifted to humanitarian aid. The desperate need for medicine, food and other necessities. India, too, has joined in this humanitarian aid effort. Nearly 6.5 tons of medical aid and 32 tons of disaster material have been sent to, the, to Palestine, which will reach the country via Egypt. Is India, therefore, now looking to reach out to the Palestinian people after criticism early on that it wasn't doing enough? It's tonight's top story. Gaza is counting its dead and reeling under a massive humanitarian crisis. And India is leading the global efforts to send aid to the crisis zone. Days after Prime Minister Modi spoke to Palestinian Authority President Mohammad Abbas and condoled civilian deaths in Gaza hospital attack, India has sent plane load of aid to war-torn Gaza. An IAF C-17 flight carrying around 6.5 tons of medical aid and 32 tons of disaster relief material for the people of Palestine on Sunday departed for I. Arish Airport in Egypt. The aid is being sent to Palestine via the Rafah border crossing between Egypt and Gaza which was opened on Saturday. Former Vice President of India, Hamid Ansari, said the relief aid by India to Gaza should have been sent earlier. The ongoing Palestine-Israel conflict has resulted in the tragic loss of more than 5,600 lives on both sides. Hundreds of thousands of Gazans have been displaced since Israel began carrying out a constant bombardment of the Gaza Strip in response to the October 7th attack by Hamas fighters, which killed around 1,400 Israelis. After days of diplomatic wrangling over conditions for delivering the relief, the Rafah border crossing between Egypt and Gaza has been opened up to let desperately needed aid flow into Gaza Strip. After a convoy including 20 aid trucks carrying medicines, food supplies, water tanks and tents was sent on Saturday, the second aid convoy of 15 trucks destined for desperate Palestinian civilians reached Gaza on Sunday. Israel's constant bombardment of Gaza, a 45-kilometer-long enclave, in retaliation to the Hamas attack, has only worsened conditions for Gazans living there under a blockade by Israel and Egypt since Hamas took control 
in 2007. With Gaurav Savant in Tel Aviv, Bureau Report, India Today. Joining me at this moment is Adnan Abu al Haija, the Palestinian ambassador to India. Appreciate you joining us, Mr. al uh, Haija. India sending humanitarian aid to Palestine over the weekend, plane load of medical supplies, other material to Gaza. Is this something that you believe will now contribute to the growing humanitarian crisis in Gaza? And do you appreciate that the Modi government has now reached out to the people of Palestine? For sure, we appreciate what uh, Mr. Modi government has done. And I think the Palestinian people are in need for a humanitarian aid. Uh, we are always looking uh, for India, and uh, we ask more, let me say, not only for humanitarian aid, mm -hmm. as long as also we are looking for political, political attitudes, mm -hmm. and uh, we are looking uh, for India to uh, uh, cooperate with other countries to break down the siege of have been done for 16 days of the Israelis. Uh, the normal uh, uh, supplier thing to the uh, Gaza Strip before the 7th of October, hundreds of lorry of uh, tracks used to enter. Mm -hmm. Gaza at that time, uh, for 16 days up to now, there is only 16, uh, uh, tra uh, 20 trucks has entered Gaza, mm -hmm. and most of, of it is medicine. We need the fuel for the hospital, fuel for the hospitals, and uh, food for the people, electricity, oxygen for the patient, and... Uh, uh as Mr. you know, all uh, Mr. humanitarian Ambassador, aids. Mr. Ambassador, I realize that this is a very small part of what Palestinians need. But you said just now India needs to play a part in lifting the siege in Gaza. You actually want India to find a political solution? Do you actually think Indians can actually, the Indian government can contribute to lifting the siege in Gaza? Does that have to be done by the Western world, which has far greater clout with Israel, which is backing Israel all the way? What, what, what role can India play here? No, not India all, only, but India is a very important country and it has very strong relation with many other countries all around the world. Uh, India with the international community, uh, European or uh, Russia, China, the United States or Arab countries, they sure they have to cooperate and make a real pressure at the Israelis because what's going on, it's war crimes. It can't be continued like that. 2.2 well, uh, of our people are living uh, in uh, an open prison. Before the 7th of October, the poverty in Gaza Strip was 70 percent. So you can imagine what is the situation with that killing, with that destruction, with that uh, uh, ethnic cleansing from North Gaza to South Gaza with the, the genocide of the killing of that people. You know, up to now, they have killed, uh, who are registered from the health ministry, 4,800 people and registered more than 1,300 under the debris of the building. So they all together are more than uh, 6,000. But people have been killed and 16,000 has been injured. But Mr. Ambassador, sir, with due regard, while the siege may, you may want the siege to be lifted from Gaza, you also need to see, we also need to see Hamas being condemned, the hostages' safety being guaranteed, and those responsible for the killing of innocent Israeli civilians being prosecuted. The fact is, it's one thing to provide humanitarian aid, but what about the Palestinian community, the Arab world? Who is going to put pressure on Hamas to ensure that they are accountable for their crimes, that they ensure that the hostages are returned safely? That should be the first step, sir. Let me say Hamas is not the Palestinian people. And these crimes are not affecting Hamas organization. It's affect the Palestinian people themselves. Mm -hmm. 
So the reaction can't be like that. If they want to fight, let them fight Hamas, but not making war crimes against the Palestinian people. It's kind of genocide against the Palestinian people. So what about the hostages? Right. But Secondly, in this occupation, there is no Hamas. There is no crimes. There is no any of that. The main problem is the occupation. This is not the first war, not the second, not the third. Hope they will find a political solution, peaceful solution to the Palestinian cause. And we are looking our, uh, to see our children wake mm -hmm. up in the morning with the, of the bad voice, not on the uh, 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 bomb voice. So in the occupation, there is no Hamas, there is no any our people except the government gun. But Mr. Ambassador, what, let's turn to India's role. What role are you actually hoping that India plays? Do you want India to play some kind of a mediator between Israel and, and Palestine? The Prime Minister has uh, spoken to Prime Minister Netanyahu in Israel. He's spoken to Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. What role are you looking India to play a mediator or simply a, a, one of, in a group of nations who can put pressure on both sides to de-escalate? Or the Israelis to de-escalate? Yes, we, were, we would like, yes. And President Abbas, I'm talking uh, in his name, he is ready for the peace solution. Mm -hmm. We are ready as a Palestinian, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this Israeli government refused to meet Mr. Ab uh, President Mahmoud Abbas since 2014. Mm -hmm. He did not meet. They said we don't uh, find uh, a partner of peace. We did not find a partner of peace. This extreme government, they don't want to uh, any uh, peace of process. They want the land and peace at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because of that, we say that they are looking to uh, evacuate people from Gaza Strip and from West Bank to Jordan and Egypt. This is what they are planning. And it's easy, I mean, to know it's not a new thing from Gaza. Mm -hmm. Netanyahu has discussed that with the ex-president of Egypt, Mr. Hosni Mubarak. He, and when he mentioned that we can make 10 cities for them in Sina. You're Desert. saying, you're saying. Hosni Mubarak said. Forget. No, no, you're saying the Israelis want all Palestinians to be evacuated out of Gaza. But I ask you again, will you therefore accept that Hamas needs to be eliminated? Will you accept that Hamas needs to hand over hostages? Will you accept that Hamas is the one that escalated this round of the conflict? Will you accept and therefore support an attack on Hamas and see it as a terrorist group, sir? No, 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 I don't attack, I don't, I don't support, I don't support the Israelis, I, I don't support the, occup the occupation, occupation should be ended, sir, that's uh, it, no, no, the I'm, killing of the Palestinians, do you know from the beginning? Sir, you're, you're not answering my question, do you agree that Hamas also has to be eliminated, it's one thing, Israeli occupation, yes, that... That is a debate that must also be on the table. But do you agree that Hamas has to be, their leadership has to pay for what has happened? Hamas is part of the Palestinian people, right? Mm -hmm. In the occupation, there, there won't be Hamas. Hamas will be ended as long as the occupation is not there. What, this extreme government, by the way, mm -hmm. since it has been formed last end of September, from the beginning of this year till 7th of September, uh, of October, they have killed 260 people in West Bank. From 7th of October till now, uh, they have killed 93 people in West Bank. They are killing the people, confiscating land. Uh, their settlers, armed settlers, their militia, are killing the Palestinian people everywhere, burning their homes uprooting their trees, uh, defended by the occupied soldiers. So you have 
not only to talk about Hamas, talk about those mm -hmm. criminals of the occupied uh, forces and their militias, the settlers. Let me leave it there, Adnan uh, uh, You've given us your position. You appreciate what the Modi government has done, but you expect now the Israelis to end what you're saying, the siege of Gaza. I appreciate you joining us at this moment. Let's raise the big questions. Does Gaza aid reassure the Arab world? Let's look at India's position closely. India-Israel ties, do they end up unnerving the Arab world? Has the Modi government struck the right balance now? What role should India be playing going ahead? Joining me now, Dr. Wail Awad, a senior journalist who's been tracking West Asia for years. Kaval Sibyl, former foreign secretary, is with us. And KC Singh, former secretary, Ministry of External Affairs. Let me come to you, Kaval Sibyl, first. Do you believe that the, that the Modi government has struck a balance between expressing solidarity with Israel and now giving aid to the Palestinians? Or are we in danger in this diplomatic tightrope walk of falling off the rope? I don't think so. We have expressed solidarity with Israel on the terrorism issue. And we have expressed solidarity with the Palestinians because there is the larger question mm -hmm. of two-state solution, Palestinian rights, and the brutalization of the Palestinians all these decades, and what is happening on the West Bank, the expansion of uh, settlements, and of course, the violence by the settlers, by the extreme right-wing uh, Israelis. So it's, it, I don't think uh, the two are contradictory to each other because mm -hmm. we don't accept terrorism and we also have reservations about the disproportionate action by Israel currently to destroy large swaths of Gaza and force evacuation of a million and a half people mm -hmm. from the north of Gaza to the south with all the humanitarian consequences that follow. And therefore, Prime Minister Modi and government have taken the step to channel humanitarian aid uh, to Palestine, which is sorely needed, but this is a drop in the ocean. Mm -hmm. As was rightly said by the ambassador, before this thing erupted, there were four or 500 trucks going daily through Rafah. And now if you have 20 or 30 trucks going for a million and a half people who are evacuated and otherwise who are suffering because of shortage of, of because of end of water supplies and everything else, food, fuel, this is not going to meet the situation. But yes, mm -hmm. it is a gesture government of India has made. Finally, with regard to balancing, every country is trying to balance in a different way. The United States also, while fully supporting Israel, has cautioned Israel about not flying into a rage and committing the mistakes the United States did after 9-11, and also playing their role in, in, in uh, facilitating the opening of the Gaza, uh, of the Rafah border. Other countries also have their own way of balancing uh, the, the situation, supporting Israel, but at the same time supporting the Palestinian cause. I think we have done what we ought to do in, in this current situation. And it's not a question of balancing. It is actually doing the right thing by way of both sides. Right. On one side, support them against this terrible terrorist attack. And I'm very surprised that the, uh, that the ambassador of, uh, of Palestine absolutely refuses to acknowledge that Hamas has done a terror attack. In fact, Hamas has been governing this uh, territory. It has popular support. It may have declined over the years, but it has popular support. You can't totally distinguish between Hamas as pretending there's a foreign kind of a occupation of, uh, of, of uh, the West Bank. Of the, right. Uh, of I, I get Gaza. your point. But you're saying, you're saying we've done the right thing. Casey Singh, have we done the right thing or is this a diplomatic tightrope walk? We started by expressing solidarity. The Prime Minister spoke to Benjamin Netanyahu. There were some reports that the Arab world wanted India to do more in terms of uh, uh, focusing on the plight of the Palestinian people who were being bombed. Uh, do you believe, therefore, there's been a course correction? Rajiv, we discussed it on your program the day it began on October 7. And I was saying that day that Prime Minister's statement was giving it uh, a one-sided slant and seemed to be a deviation from, a, from the traditional Indian position. Uh, now, if the Ministry of External Affairs had come out immediately after that uh, with their statement, when they took a number of days to come out with that statement, uh, to balance it and say that there are two sides to it, we wouldn't be asking these questions. No, but, but with due regard, Mr. K.C. Singh, let's be fair. Prime Minister Modi on the first day was responding to a horrific terror attack. Now, you know, you don't no. expect him to then balance it out with Palestinian rights on day one itself. Well, the Chinese did it. 
the others did it. Yes, you can come out. No, I'm saying Prime Minister could have said what he said, but the Ministry of External Affairs didn't need to remain silent for four, five, six days after that. That is why the questions were raised. That has there been a shift in India's stand. Then once the Ministry of External Affairs statement came, they've been rectifying it, and we've gone back to more or less the old position. And I'm very glad that the humanitarian assistance has gone today. But this is not the end of the story, because siege is not about to end. Uh, Israelis are making uh, exploratory forays. And they've been held back by the Americans till now because there are three problems in this. The problems are that, and I think President Biden going there, he summed it up. He, you know, basically backed the Israelis very strongly, but he also was simultaneously saying that I understand your anger, but don't let your anger consume you. He says that's the mistake the Americans made after 9 11. And they paid with lives in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. Iraq, and really didn't achieve anything. So what he's telling is right. What the Americans are doing are three things. They're trying to get the civilians out of harm's way. Mm -hmm. And that's why they held the Israelis back. So almost 600,000 people out of 1.4 million in northern Gaza have moved to southern Gaza. Then they got the southern route opened so that the humanitarian assistance coming there, the people will gravitate there. So create an area where civilians gravitate towards. And then you open the ground because they realize Americans ultimately can't stop Israel from going in. Because Israel has said elimination of Hamas uh, is uh, their absolute goal. Now, the mistake with that is that you can eliminate some of the leaders. The top leaders are sitting in Qatar. But you will radicalize the youth further because Hamas is not a group of people. It's a movement. And a movement does not get killed like uh, you know, so, Taliban are back in Afghanistan. The Americans went to finish them. So therefore, that is what the... Uh, and then the third problem is the Northern Front. Mm -hmm. So the Americans have brought in their Navy. They are putting pressure uh, to see that Hezbollah doesn't jump in. And as long as it remains a single, they'll probably give some time to Israel to go in and try getting the hostages out. In the meanwhile, we just got managed... We have just seen two hostages being given up by Hamas. Can but I, they will not, not give up more hostages because that's their human shield. Can I just stop you for a moment? That hostage question is critical, Dr. Weil Awad, because even when I asked this to the uh, uh, Palestinian ambassador, he wasn't willing to give a commitment on what happens to the hostages. And therefore, while India is out there at the moment providing humanitarian aid, the Palestinians' moral high ground will not exist if the hostages are killed. If the hostages are killed, including some American citizens, that will also lead to anger and outrage again. So do you believe that that is the very minimal that will have to be done to try and de-escalate this conflict? Well, the minimum can be done at the moment the cessation of all hostilities because there is already more than 14 of the hostages have died because of the Israeli bombardment. And in fact, uh, Hamas have also offered two free out of no uh, conditions, uh, more hostages to release, but they were refused by the Israeli government. So I don't see the, uh, the uh, hostages issue is seriously is uh, uh, avoiding our... our no, but Dr. Awad, there are 222 hostages according to the Israeli Defense Force at the moment with Hamas, unless they are uh, uh, released, yes. even in batches. How do you then expect yes. countries like India to play a role in, pro in, in promoting... Uh, uh, Palestinian interests. For, for a large part of the world, there is no distinction between Palestine and Hamas. Rajdeep, I think uh, we must all understand that India is not a colonized society culture. India is a civilized country and understand the deep of the problem in Palestine after I'm listening to two distinguished guests at your panel and I understand the position of India consistently have been supporting justice and freedom for the Palestinian a two-state solution. It's nothing new to that. What I'm trying to say here, what for the last 75 years, we have been seeing Israel attacking the Palestinians, uprooting their villages, kicked out 750,000 Palestinians in, in, in 1948, and have uh, the, the, uh, taken all their territories. Now, to the Palestinians, what they have done, they have changed the paradigm of the game. They have twisted this time. They attacked inside their uh, occupied territories inside Israel. So they have taken hostages, and there are 10,000 hostages of a Palestinian inside uh, Israel jail, lavishing there. They have, th there are people who, according mm. to Human Rights Watch, according to risk, ask any agency in the world, they tell you there are more than 2,000 people there. For decades they are there. There is no law why they have been detained. 
No, no advocate can go. Every Palestinian will tell you. I'm not here to defend Hamas or defend anybody. I'm just trying to say here that hostages have been used in wars because they wanted to exchange. They wanted. They wanted to. They have been doing it. Right. Israel attacked Hamas, attacked Gaza Strip five five times. This is the sixth time. It's nothing new. I mean, I I covered the region extensively. I interviewed Arafat. I interviewed Mahmoud Abbas. I asked them when Netanyahu was in power. They never expected anything from him. Uh, uh, Rabin, the prime minister of Israel, was killed because he killed the uh, Oslo agreement Netanyahu. And his right-wing supporter killed Rabin. His wife, widower of Rabin, she said it on TV of the Israelis. How you want to tell me? that this kind of government is seriously willing to have a peace with the Palestinians. Okay. They are obliterating Palestine. Even your aid or rest of the world aid will not reach because there will be no Palestinian left to survive on the uh, genocide in a concentration camp they have created for them. You know, uh, uh, Kawal Sibal, I've been playing through the show also over the years how India's standards changed. When Jawaharlal Nehru, and I'll, I'll look at that, when Jawaharlal Nehru was Prime Minister of India, he was very clear that India needed to stand by Palestine. It became a human rights issue. It was seen in a way as uh, one of the fallouts of colonialism. The RSS and the BJP over the years stood by Israel. By 1992, we have Narasimha Rao becoming Prime Minister. India recognizes Israel. Before that, Indira Gandhi, very close to Arafat. India becomes the first country to officially recognize the PLO at the time. An embassy office was set up here in 1980. And now we have Prime Minister Modi, who is seen to have built a strong relationship with Mr. Netanyahu. Can India really play any kind of a mediatory role? The Prime Minister is ringing up uh, uh, Amman, he's ringing up other Arab capitals. On the Arab street, does India carry any weight anymore? Or is there a fear that we have to balance the concerns of the Arab street and the fact that we've got strong relations with Saudi Arabia and UAE with what's happening uh, in Israel? Look at the situation realistically. When uh, India was fully supporting the PLO and Yasser Arafat, were we able to resolve the Palestinian question? Not at all. In fact, Arafat chose to go to the West and sign the Oslo ac Accords and left out altogether the non-aligned movement. Uh, we put it all in, in, in the Western basket. Mm -hmm. The point is that India alone cannot do anything very much because big powers are involved. The United Nations, look at the helplessness of the United Nations. Look at the helplessness of the UN Secretary General. What has happened to, the, to him? He's standing at the Rafah border, uh, over supervising the flow of trucks into, into, uh, into Gaza. Mm -hmm. Is this the role of the UN Secretary General? The United States is a very critical player, player even though their power has diminished in this region. Mm -hmm. Being challenged by Russia as well as China, China even more so. Uh, these are, the, these are the countries, the, the powers, that, that have to play a significant, important, critical role in, in bringing the two sides together. The United States has walked away from the two-state solution. They, they opened their embassy in Jerusalem. They seized all assistance to the Palestinian Authority. And when, when it comes to the Arab world, look, Saudi, UAE, Bahrain, uh, Morocco, and Sudan, they recognize Israel. United, uh, Saudi Arabia was on the point of recognizing Israel. Mm -hmm. We had ITU to the India, Middle East, Europe corridor. So what, has, what role has the principal Arab states, the Gulf states, played in, in the Palestinian question? So why the burden on India when the Arab countries themselves are very keen to normalize good, with Israel? Good point. Good point, Mr. Sibal, which I want to take to you, uh, uh, Casey Singh, because you've served in the area. The Arab world seems at least privately split. Publicly, they may all have united today on the Palestinian issue. Privately, there are divisions between the more moderate states and the more radicalized states. How does India navigate what is a very difficult situation? Should India just stay out and pro keep providing humanitarian aid but do little beyond that at the moment? Is that the best way out? No, you keep your channels open to both sides. Prime Ministers today, I believe, spoken to King Abdullah. Uh, so we have a certain degree of credibility in the region. But yes, uh, uh, Ms. Sibyl is absolutely correct that we are not we don't have the ability to play the role of an active peacemaker. And secondly, do remember that in 1967, the Arab-Israeli war, that is when Israel occupied all this area, mm -hmm. West Bank and so on and so forth, there was no peace possible till 1973. Even Kissinger didn't step in. 
only when the Egyptians were able to cross the bar left line mm -hmm. and inflict some damage on Israel, then Kissinger realized that you, when two guys are fighting, there's a point at which you cannot intervene. Israel will get their revenge. At this moment, they are not going to listen. At best, the Americans can calibrate it. They can delay them. They can get the civilians out of the way. Mm -hmm. They can keep Hezbollah out so that it doesn't spin out of control. They can threaten Iran that Iran doesn't actively come in. They can allow Israel to bomb the airports of Syria so that military help doesn't come in. So they are isolating and saving the civilians. But they will give probably Israel one or two weeks to go in and try to kill as many so-called Hamas leaders as they can. But then after that, even America cannot support them because the civilians start getting killed Then too much blood is spilled. Then they'll be able to reel them back. But at the moment, I think even the conservative uh, uh, Arab countries would right. like the would like to get rid of Hamas. So they would like Israelis to go in can and I, at least decapitate them. Can I therefore take you that to Dr. Awad in conclusion? Do you believe that the Arab world wants Hamas to, to be strengthened? What is the, or is there a distinction between leadership and the Arab street? Leaderships are skeptical or even fearful of Hamas. The Arab street is treating them as, uh, uh, as, as liberators. Is that the worry also? It's not a worry, because every Palestinian who is defending his land, he has the right according to UN Charter. That is for, for sure. But, no, but he does me, not have the right uh, to kill innocent Israeli civilians in the process. No, 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 no. Any civilian kills any killing of a human being. Remember, Jenison said, if you cannot create, you cannot kill. Let us be more uh, practical on this. What is I'm trying to say is, Rajiv, I think you should put in the highlight in your next program, it is not Hamas which they are after. It is uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon, it is Iran which they are after, the American is fighting their warships in the Mediterranean, they are already filled islands in, in Greece with the warships, Israel having F-16, F-15, F-35, they are bombing, they are killing, they wanted to provoke the streets of the Arab so they can pressurize their government to participate in a war where Israel can expand and create a greater Israel from Euphrates to Nile. Remember, if you go to the Knesset of the Israelis, you will see at the gate of the Knesset, they have said that the, the, the border of Israel is from Euphrates, from Euphrates to Nile. So if that is the aim and objective, it become a, it become a fight of extensionists, right. either we or you. Okay. Unless and until we have a two-state solution, there is no question of peace in the Middle East. Okay, let me leave it there. I appreciate all my guests joining us on our top talking point. It is a tough situation which India in particular will have to navigate with caution in the weeks ahead. Kaval Sibal, KC Singh, Wailabad, appreciate you joining me here on the news today.